Wow, wow, wow. Wow, wow. Well, uh, normally on car talk we drive cars, but today is slightly different. We're going to shoot them. Well, to be more precise, we're going to shoot at two doors. One a perfectly normal door with a laminated uh, window, the other one with an armour plated door with an armour plated window. Can't wait. Whatever blows your ears back, Davy boy. In point of fact, there's a good reason why Mr. B was whistling the theme tune from a spaghetti western. In modern day South Africa, the bad guys can appear unexpectedly demanding your money, your car, or both. And as many good guys have discovered, ordinary pressed steel and laminated glass are no match for a large caliber bullet when things turn ugly. This is the Range Rover TD V8 and to all intents and purposes it looks like a perfectly normal Range Rover TD V8 with the exception that every bit of glass is armour plated and the doors are also armour plated. Unfortunately they're not going to let us shoot this one though. That's Grant Anderson, MD of Armour Max South Africa, proving the point that normal doors, even expensive ones like those on a Range Rover, provide little resistance to a 44 slug. You don't need much imagination to understand what that watermelon symbolizes in this demonstration. And in 2007 alone, almost 7,000 vehicles were hijacked in Gauteng. Well, this is a standard piece of glass that you'd find in a normal automobile. It's a tempered glass. But this piece of glass has a piece of safety film on the, on the back, sometimes referred to as a smash and grab. As you can see when we shot it, the, the rounds went quickly through. On a standard piece of glass that doesn't have that safety film on the back, what would happen would the, would, what would happen normally would be the glass would just crumble into small pieces. Now Grant is shooting at the armor-plated door and glass. The results are impressive from the good guy's point of view, that is. This is a leaded glass that we use in combination with other type of plastic composites. It's designed to match identically with your or original glass that you put in your car, except this is ballistic. As you can see, this, this has stopped a 44 Magnum, stopped it dead in its tracks. In the back, it's smooth, no, no penetration. What's occurred is the glass on the outside has slowed the round down and the plastic or the polycarbonate, which is a la has some elasticity in it, has caught the glass that's here as well as the round of ammunition. Let's see what Dead-Eyed Dave can do. It absorbs not only the round itself, but the fragments of glass from the ballistic glass. This has a polycarbonate inner layer that absorbs the energy of the round as well as these sharp fragments of glass that protect you even more on the inside. The typical steel door on the motor car is equally vulnerable to a large caliber bullet. This option uses special aramid Kevlar type fiber inserts concealed behind the standard door panels of a vehicle to prevent the bullet from entering the cabin. These inserts provide protection for some of the world's wealthiest celebrities and even the Pope. International Armoring has basically three goals when we go into armoring a vehicle. The first is we want to armor the vehicle according to the perceived threat. Second, we want to maintain the original appearance of the vehicle. And third, we want to maintain the original performance. The armoring takes between 5 and 10 days to install, and while it's not cheap, it could be the best investment you've ever made. Um, the armor plating on the glass and the doors in a hijack situation gives you at least 3 to 5 seconds for you to make up a decision, a key decision to get out of there. It costs 250,000 Rand to armor all four doors and side windows. A less expensive option can be to armor just the front doors and side glass at a price of around 40,000 Rand for a single door and glass protection. It all depends on the client's needs. If you think you might be heading for the Wild West anytime soon, or the Wild North, South or East for that matter, you might want to think about some protection. Just ask David, after all, he knows what it's like to stop a bullet.
Armour plating an executive car like the Range Rover seems to make a lot of sense to me. On something like this, it adds 185 kilograms, which isn't going to really change an awful lot of the performance characteristics of the car unless you're driving it to the limit. But most important is that if you're in here and you have armour plating and you're driving on South Africa's roads, it's a bit like airbags. You're going to feel a lot safer.